Where can we store evidence of war crimes? How do we battle rising disinformation? And how can we hold war criminals to account? Welcome to Word on the Block, the series that takes a deeper dive into blockchain and the emerging technologies that shape our world at the intersection of business, politics, and economy. It's what we cover right here on Forecast News. I'm Forecast Editor-in-Chief Angie Lau. More than 6 million Syrians have been forced to flee their homes, many now refugees in what is now a nine-year conflict. And we know that facts are often in dispute. But a group of Syrian volunteers calling themselves the White Helmets wore mounted cameras on their heads to record the scenes on the ground of the Syrian civil war in the early days. The toll has been heavy, and perhaps now it's time to let the code take over. Hadera Hashgraph has recently been selected by Hala Systems. This is a social enterprise that develops technologies to protect civilians from misinformation, to verify data provenance and remove centralized control of information. Joining me right now is the co-founder and CEO of Hadera, Mance Harmon. Mance, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Angie. I'm glad to be back. Good to see you again. Absolutely. I, I want to learn more. Um, our audience wants to learn more. I mean, we, we've, we've been experiencing uh, and, and observing um, and, and uh, just watching uh, most of us very lucky from afar. Uh, but for those uh, who are on the ground in Syria, it, it's anything but. How does the HALA systems work? And, and how is distributed ledger technology going to be used to help protect that content that uh, is not only produced by civilians, but also in, in a way protects them as well. Yeah, well, look, this is one of those projects that I'm very excited and humbled, proud to be a part of uh, the team there at Halle, as well as uh, Jonathan Doten have really done something unique and special with this technology. The, the system consists of a set of sirens, as well as remote sensors and devices on the ground in Syria. And there's a contingent of observers, as you've already mentioned, who are equipped with cameras and recording equipment. They've developed advanced algorithms that include natural language processing algorithms. They can distinguish between uh, bomb blasts and, and fireworks, for, for example. When the sensors or observers detect an incoming airstrike, that information is broadcast via the sirens and via the app uh, to mobile phones um, to alert the civilians in the area. And so at a, at, at a top level, that's how it notifies and, and civilians are able to have a few minutes to take cover and do the things that they might not otherwise have been able to do if, uh, if they didn't have that time of notification. And this saves uh, lives, obviously. It saves lives, yes. That's, of course, that's, that's the most important thing here. Um, you're also recording yeah, right. a lot of, mm -hmm. you're, all, you're also recording a lot of important information. Yes. Um, and you're going to be storing that. that. That's evidence of something. Yeah, well, so Hedera, that is ensuring that this system, that information can't be maliciously tampered with, right? The, for the integrity of the system, it's very important that that information is both verified and logged to the Hedera network to ensure that it's authentic, time-stamped, and cannot be manipulated by other parties. Each event that comes in is logged through the Hedera consensus service. It's signed by the issuing devices keys, so the camera, for example, and it receives a consensus timestamp by the whole of the Hedera network. This ensures that the data is better able to be trusted by supporting third parties. Uh, and if needed, the broader public due to its immutable and tamper-proof properties. And, uh, and that's the role that Hedera plays in, in the solution as a whole. Uh, you you have a lot of experience here. Uh, one of your, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, pre blockchain pre DLT, uh, you were course director for cybersecurity at the U.S. Air Force Academy, uh, and you know it might have been a long time ago, but but how do you? 
think about it uh, as you carry towards DLT and applications uh, on the ground in real world situations? Yeah. Well, look, over the past decades, two, three decades, the amount of data that we've been able to collect and we're now able to collect today is um, enormous, right? The, there's more data at our fingertips than ever before. But at the same time, the trust in that data is at an all time low. Um, so data for humanitarian purposes like this, we see with Hala systems in Syria is subject to mistrust by the public at large and centralized databases can be compromised. So decentralized technologies like what we're providing here at Hedera should over time boost people's confidence in the integrity of the data, which of course will have a far reaching uh, impact uh, on, on society as a whole as this technology is used on a broader scale. That's a great point because, you know, it's, it's obviously, it's life and death, but it's, it's, you know, which side are you on? And then do you doubt the data that you're given? You know, th there's just so many layers of distrust and fear and terror, quite frankly. How does DLT um, and have you experienced, has HALA systems experienced that where, you know, what, what once might have been distrusted because yeah. of technology that trust is restored? Well, exactly. Um, you know, the, the world we live in today is that the video, the pictures, deep fakes, uh, people in general now understand that the technology can make them see things that never happened. And uh, what HALA is doing along with our technology is making it possible. If you, if you believe that the source of the information is trustworthy and it's verified when the information is stored with us, then in the future, it becomes possible to prove that the information that was stored with us is not tampered with. It's the real authentic video clip or picture that was captured by those on the ground taking the original video. That is powerful because that means that the public that knows that the technology is being used in, in the case of those video clips and the pictures that they're seeing or whether it's audio, it's trustworthy in a way that others that don't have the same technology behind it can't be trusted. It's subject to, uh, to, to manipulation in, in ways that you can't manipulate if you're using this technology. It's, it's almost a symptom of, of where we are right now that distrust is, is, is really felt by a lot of people, whether in, in a war situation or a politicized situation where it, if it is the source that is telling you and you distrust the source, then all of a sudden, even if it's factual or it's information that is important that needs to be disseminated, then that is also immediately disregarded or distrusted. Uh, and I wonder, you know, in, a, in obviously a wartime situation, that can either save your life or get you killed. Um, you know, where, where can we, where can we get to with, with DLT that, that protects the civilians and uploaders of this um, content that protects them also from potential online harassments and, and threats as a result of, of what we have often seen uh, both in Syria and in, in other trouble spots of, of state-backed disinformation campaigns? Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that um, there will always be the problem of knowing who is trustworthy as the original source versus derivative works, right? Uh, there, there are the people that are gonna be on the ground, like the folks that are associated with the HALA systems um, um, social project that are doing this for pure motives and, and, and the right reasons. In some sense, I think that the public at large is going to look at them as an organization and just trust them in a way that they don't trust mainstream media or governments, right? Because uh, th there's a, there is uh, less uh, scrutiny perhaps or less uh, skepticism 
about the motives. And so it's always the case that somebody is behind the camera, somebody is creating the original work, and we have to figure out which of those original works, those people behind those works are trustworthy and, and which are not. Assuming we can do that, then the technology comes into play in ensuring that the works themselves have not been tampered with. So there's, there's the problem of identifying trustworthy sources that are, that are capturing the works in the first place, and then technically ensuring that the works themselves haven't been tampered with. We, of course, do the second part, and HALA is focused on the first. And that's why the combination of the two are, are important, and you know, we're excited to be a part of it. So, you know, you explained HALA systems. It's got the support of the United Nations, uh, the UK Foreign Commonwealth Development Office, the US State Department, the list goes on and on. Do you see HALA systems efforts and then using the, the technology, the DLT technology um, and, and leveraging that, being benchmarked by, by other war affected regions? Oh, I do. And, uh, you know, that's the great thing about being a network at the bottom of the stack in that we're, we're providing that trust layer that's at the very bottom of the technology stack for the solution that they brought to, brought to market, so to speak. Um, they built a fantastic platform. And as they gain users of that platform, like the organizations that you've listed, those users then become users of Hedera as well. So we look for the ways that we can help other platforms like HALA uh, build on the work that HALA is doing that um, would in turn then of course just be using the same technology that we're providing. So we're, we're again, we're pr very proud that Hedala, excuse me, very proud that HALA Systems has chosen to build on Hedera and uh, we look forward to an ongoing close relationship with them and, and those that they partner with. Well, you know, according to a 2019 report, uh, Yemen, uh, which is another trouble hotspot, uh, accounted for the majority of internet shutdowns in the Middle East region. And in addition to that, there were there were reports from multiple trusted sources that, that the true number of internet shutdowns in Yemen is actually far higher than originally documented. Uh, so let's talk about the centralized versus decentralized. Uh, and, and the critical part, which is access to this information. How, how does DLT, uh, potentially HALA systems, uh, can, can circumvent and, and maybe, uh, you know, help battle the, the centralized shutdowns that, that we're seeing in hotspots? Yeah, well, what's really interesting is that the solution is distributed, meaning that there are nodes uh, that are running the same software all around the world. And mm -hmm. it's, um, they're working in concert with one another to ensure that the network remains available on a global basis. So even if it's the case that the internet goes down in a certain location and it takes offline one of those nodes, it's still the case that there are other nodes that are available on a, on a global basis, presuming there's a network connection that gets you to one of those nodes at all. And, and then in the case here, even if they don't have the ability to upload that information in real time, they still have it on their phone. You know, they still have it on their camera or where, you know, however they've captured that information. And when there's availability to the internet at all, when there is a comm link, from them to any of the nodes on a global basis, they can time step that information and, and still uh, you know, achieve the solution that, that they are, are trying to achieve. So yeah. you know, bringing down a single node or even a few nodes is not, a, uh, is not something that brings the solution offline in total. I mean, what, what you're talking about truly is, is what we all know to be um, a, a self-protection, that if we held the secret and nobody else knows, there's danger in the person who's keeping that piece of information. But if suddenly it's out there and everybody knows, there is protection there. 
Um, and I'm curious about what other applications uh, we can apply here. We're, we're also experiencing a, a battle of a different kind against COVID-19. This is something that universally we are all battling right now. Is there a way that, that you know, that that application of DLT is, is useful here? Well, yes, it's interesting. It's the same technology, but applied in a different context. And specifically it's applied in this case with, for example, Arizona State Uni University, ASU. Um, they have a, an application that they call Health Check. It's an app uh, that is used by the students of the university, by the faculty of the university to help combat the COVID problem that we're all dealing with here on a, on a global basis. So when COVID came along, it was natural to take their existing infrastructure, their existing applications, try to enhance them uh, in a way that they could combat the COVID problem on, on campus. They needed a way to work with students, faculty, staff, to make sure that everyone was engaged with taking care of their own health and protecting those that are around them. And Safe Health Systems, a technology partner to ASU and, and working with us had already worked out the details. And so mm -hmm. they brought in the solution that makes it possible for ASU to do COVID testing and record those results, do contact tracing, et cetera, knowing that those results are captured using our technology, they're immutable, and, um, and, and they can then be used by the health community at large for, for protecting the students and faculty on, on campus. It's, it's incredible how facts can, can inform and protect us and, and really save lives. And then the absence of that or the distrust of that really puts us in a dangerous position. I think we have seen it uh, not only in COVID, we have seen it in hotspots, uh, in war-torn regions such as Syria, uh, such as Yemen. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is the promise of the technology. And I, I, I think that, I think that this is, this is what we all hold dear to. Yeah. Well, um, in this case, there are 74,000 students. There are 12,000 employees that all begin their mornings by using this mm -hmm. app at ASU. They fill out a form, a survey of uh, their health and whether or not their symptoms. That is then used by, to, by the community at large there at the campus to make sure that the population is, is protected and, and stays healthy. It's how we take care of each other. Mance yeah. Harmon, thank you so much for this and, and sharing uh, how that technology is being used. Uh, it, at Halla Systems, uh, so and really, uh, you know, as we see the dissemination of DLT uh, to really restore trust in in information. So thank you so much for this, and and thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, thank you. It's good to be here again. And thank you, everyone, for joining us on this latest episode of Word on the Block. I'm Angie Lau, Forecast News Editor in Chief. Until the next time. If you like that, come back for more. All you have to do is click like, always comment, we love that, and subscribe. And don't forget to watch the next one.